Hi, this is DarkFox127 and welcome to another Skyrim Creation Kit tutorial video. In today's video, I'm going to be carrying on with my series, How Is It Done? Where I show you how you can go ahead and create various features that are within my mods. So the last video we did the fireplace and in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how I did the unpacking of crates in Granthia Tower Reborn. So let's get started. Okay then, so I've gone ahead and loaded up the cell that I was working with last time. As you can see, we had our whole fireplace thing done for the last video. And now this time around, I've gone ahead and put a load of crates together. So the idea is that this is a collection of items that you go ahead and unpack and then all the clutter shows up. So we've got things like the stuff on the table over here. We've got the wall mounted antlers there. We've got the basket on the wall. So it's all of just like the general clutter. That's how it worked with CTR. You would craft the furniture and then you would have all the clutter lying around that you would unpack from crates as it had been boxed away for many, many years. So that's the sort of thing we're going to be setting up. So you've got a couple of choices here, really. You're going to be working off an activator either way. You can do what I ended up with doing in CTR updates where I changed it from being just a single activator to kind of a trigger box which covered the collection of items so it was easier to select or you can go ahead and you can say let's turn this crate into an activator so you would go ahead you would copy that model and you'd go under activator right click new and you just go ahead go to meshes paste that model name in and you would go ahead, set everything up and turn that into an activator. And when you activate that box, you get a little message menu and you'll be able to just select yes, no, unpack, do whatever you wish. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to work it off of a trigger box. It's the best way of doing it, in my opinion, as you're going to be able to cover a large area. You're not going to have to select the box completely because what I noticed is it's very difficult to notice that it's a thing you can select when you walk by it. If it's just a select item that you can actually sort of hover over. So I'm going to click on the crate. I'm going to go ahead and make a trigger box. So it's the one with the box for the teen at the top there. And I'm going to double click new. And I'm going to give this a reference of a DF. Uh, we'll say ACT for activator. So I don't have to type too much out. And we will put unpack and create a new activator. Then that will come up. I'm going to go ahead and give it a name. So I'm going to be calling that crates and then in the activate text override this is what's going to show up in place of activate if you leave it blank it will just say activate and then the name so i'm going to put unpack so i'll say unpack crates and before i do anything else like adding the script i'm just going to go ahead and click ok and confirm it now if you don't see your trigger box here at all it's probably because you've got markers turned off so you can tap m on the keyboard to show and hide your markers so i'm going to go ahead and lift this thing up now, if you start having any weird little issues with this thing, like I am here, like dragging it around, it's been a bit of a pain. You can just tap two and it will get rid of the gizmos, which are kind of affecting you just being able to free for move this thing around. Then I'll just get my gizmos back, press two again, and I'm just going to sort this to where I want. So obviously anything you see here as the trigger is the area that you can activate, but do be aware with activators that it's not that very specific select area. It can sort of be a little bit more of a radius than this as you can be a distance away from things to activate them. So you'll have to sort of perfect how large you're going to want this thing. That'll do for me, just for the tutorial. So then I'm going to double click on my activator. I'm going to go into primitive. I'm going to tick player activation. Some of this is pretty much what we did in the last tutorial. And if you've watched that, you remember me mentioning that you just want to make sure that this is offset. If these are all zeros and it's a perfect angle, it's probably going to glitch out and not work. So it's just a little bit of a bug with the creation kit. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is go back onto it. I'm just going to click Enable Parent, and I want this to be here along with these crates. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have all of the items linked to this X marker. So first of all, I want this trigger linked to the X marker. The X marker by default is disabled. This X marker is going to represent whether things are hidden or visible, so whether they're packed or unpacked. Now, by default, it is initially disabled. So anything linked to this is going to be initially disabled with it. So that's going to be all of our stuff that we have yet to unpack. So because I am using the trigger here and the boxes and the broom and the barrel here, these are going to be here before the clutter. Then once you've unpacked it, this stuff needs to go. So this is going to be opposite the actual X marker. So I'm going to set that to opposite. I'll do the same for all of these. I'm going to tap two. I've got that trigger on. So I'm going to hold down control, select each of these. Double tap one, tap it again just to make sure I've selected everything. 
Then I'm going to hit the dash button. It's batch, the batch menu that's for. And then I'm going to set enable parent. And I'm going to do the same for these. I'm going to link these to the X marker. And I'm going to tick opposite and click do. And if you just click on one of these individually, as long as there's a line to it, and you can double check it by clicking on it, it's done the, the whole batch thing. So it does everything at once. So my clutter items should already be linked up. I did that earlier on. So all my clutter items are going to be linked to it without the opposite. So these are going to be copying its exact state. So they are by default going to be disabled with the X marker, this lot enabled. That way you don't have to specifically disable any of this stuff within the script. You can literally just enable the X marker and this lot will disappear. That lot will appear. Dead, dead simple. So now what we need to do is attach the actual script. Now, as usual, as is going to be the case with most, if not all of these tutorials within this series, you do not really need to know any scripting. I am going to be providing scripts within Project Modularity. Uh, yet again, if you don't know what Project Modularity is, you can go ahead and check out the video at the top right of the screen now. Uh, we're going to be using Project Modularity scripts. So I'm going to go ahead and click Add. I've created a script quite recently for this. Yes to all if you get any errors. It's usually when you've got the DLCs loaded, there's certain scripts it just does not like. And I'm going to go ahead and type in unpack for my script. These scripts are available as part of Project Modularity, which you can download from the Nexus. Or you can actually go ahead and get them individually in just a scripts pack so that you don't have to download all of the resources just to get access to a small script like this. So it's all in the description down below. I'm going to go ahead and add in my script. As usual, it is probably wise to go ahead and just rename this and create your own named version of this uh, so that you're not just using my direct script. You can change them up. Uh, as otherwise, if other people end up using these in mods and they make changes to this script and save it, it could overwrite your own. So just make sure you make your own version of it and change the name in the script at the top. So I could go through the script, but I don't think it's really worth doing. To be fair, those of you that really want to know how the script works and get into the scripting part of things, you can go ahead and check out my scripting tutorial series. And then when you start getting familiar with scripts, you can probably come back in here and you can figure out how most of this works anyway. Just going to be a complete waste of time to go through it. So when you've added the script onto your activator, double click on it and you can see yet again, just like the last tutorial, we've got loads of options that you can go ahead, fill in. It's quite modular and it has little tool tips on each of them. So you know exactly what things do. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to go over each of these. So the message to show if restrict is true and the condition has not been met. So what you can do is make sure that you can't actually unpack these until something else has been done. So in Corinthia Reborn, in most cases, these say that you cannot unpack it until you've done the furniture because you wouldn't want this stuff enabled and appearing on top of this stuff if the furniture isn't there. So if you're doing an entire house crafting system, you'll want that as a restriction. So what I'm going to do is for the file, I will say furniture required. And then for the action menu, I'm just going to leave that for a moment. The action success, so this is a message that says when it's been completed, so items unpacked, that'll do fine. Then we have combat fail, this is an interesting one because I have set it up so that you can't do this thing during combat because you have two options here. The first option is to have animations and the second option is to not bother with an animation. Now obviously if this starts an animation for about 5 to 10 seconds, uh, the last thing you want is somebody bashing you over the head with a sword. So you want to make sure that this is going to make sure that you can only do it when you're not in combat. So I'm going to go ahead and just set this to uh, not during combat. Got an extra P in there. Where'd that come from? There we go. So not during combat. The condition ref, this could say that these set of drawers or the X marker for your furniture in general needs to be enabled. So just to show how this works, I will put the condition ref to these drawers. And I will say that this is your condition ref. This has to be enabled for this to be a thing. Now you have the option for when you do this, you can disable a reference, you can enable a reference. So I've put a reference for each. If you need more references that you want to enable and disable during unpacking, then you can go ahead and add those yourself if you get familiar with scripting. For me, I'm not going to bother disabling anything. I'm just going to go ahead and have an enable ref. So we're going to be enabling all of our clutter items. In this case, that's going to be the X marker that they're all linked to. So it's really good just to reference everything because you'll make sure that you're clicking on the right thing because sometimes in the render window it likes to let you select references that you're not exactly 
sort of hovering over with your cursor. Game hour, this is for making time pass, so nice immersion there. You can go ahead, auto fill that property. The idle stop loose is if you have idles, you can go ahead and auto fill that property. It doesn't do the best job though. Uh, for some idles, idle stop loose does not work. The whole purpose of it is to just stop you from doing an idle if you only want it to happen for a certain time and it's on a kind of loop. It can kind of force stop it. Uh, it doesn't always work. Idles can be quite the pain. So that's why you have something called idle type. You can go ahead and add an idle in two ways. If you don't want an idle, you just don't fill this stuff in. And you can change idle type uh, to, to which one you want. So if you don't want an idle, just don't bother filling it. Uh, so idle type, you can go, I want idle type one or two. Each type, the idle is the easiest one because you go in and it's got a lovely list of all the idle animations that you can use. They always start with idle for the most part. There are other ones, uh, but most of the ones that can be used by the player do start with idle. And like I say, not all of these work. They can be a bit weird. And if you find that some of these are a bit weird and they don't work, you can go ahead and find out the exact name of the animation that you would like. Uh, there are a couple of ways of doing this. You can sort of route through the menus or you can just preview an actor and go down the list of animations on the preview window. And if you know the exact name, you can type it in and it will try and force that exact name animation. And then you just have to pick one of these ways of doing it and just tell this which way to do it. So it's one or two for which one you want to choose, which method you would like to use. Now for pastime, this is obviously, if you want any time to pass, you can tick this. Uh, there is a default to this. By default, it's true. So I am going to have time pass. So I'm going to just leave that as default. And then you can have player ref reference, obviously, to point at the player for doing things like the idols. That you can auto fill. Might take a few seconds. Uh, the restrict, this is whether we're restricting it to be checking if something else is enabled. If you don't want any restrictions, then you can go ahead and set this to false so no restrictions or you can say yes i want restrictions there should be a default on there i'll probably have to fix that before i upload it uh, i think the default is false so in this case we do want to show that off what happens when you're trying to activate it before this furniture is enabled so i'm going to have that as restrict on time is the amount of time that it's going to take for this action to happen so let's say you're just getting a few ornaments on the shelf that's going to be like an hour or something but then let's say hey i've got to organize all of the all of the stuff in this room, hang things up, move things around, place things on the side. Maybe it will take longer. So in this case, I'm just going to say it's going to take two hours. And that's how much time will pass if pass time is enabled. Then we have the waiting time. So this is default to four. It works with uh, some good animations like kneeling down and stuff for when it looks like you're unpacking the crates. You can change this. If you find that you're using an idle animation that you want to have go for longer or last longer, then you can change this. This is a bit of trial and error when you're using animations. It's how long before it basically forces the animation to stop with the idle loose. So I'm just going to leave that as default. Now, for now, I'm not actually going to bother setting animations. They can be quite annoying. I'd have to go and find the right one. I'm going to actually go ahead and just leave all the animation stuff out right now. So there's not going to be any animations played at all. So there we go. That's most of it set up. The only thing we've got now is the action menu. So what I'm going to do is just hit OK. And I am actually going to show you one part of the script so you know how this needs to run. Uh, you need to go ahead and make a message box. And you will have three options. Again, if you get familiar with scripting and you want more options than this, you can go ahead and change it. Uh, oh, two options, sorry. You'll have option one and option two. The first is to just cancel and it will do nothing and cut the script off. And the second is to perform the actual action. And then it goes with the whole checking thing. So we want a two option message box. I'm just going to confirm all this first. Go ahead, hit save. I'm going to go under misc and I'm going to message and up click and new. Bring this down, make sure message box is ticked. So we get options. It is by default, so that's absolutely fine. You're not going to need to fill in icon, owner quest, display time, title, any of that junk. You can just go ahead and df message give this uh, an id and i'm just going to call it unpack so would you like to unpack these items and then you just alt click and new alt click and new again we've got option zero and one which match up as what you saw in the script so zero is going to be not just yet whatever you want and then we'll go, sure, go for it. 
Now you can set conditions as to whether these options appear, uh, but that, that gets a bit more advanced. We're just going to go ahead and leave all of that. So, okay. Now, as you might have guessed, we want to go back into our script onto our activator and we want to fill this in to our message. So DF message unpack. Okay. On all of that. Now, if I want to test this whole restrict thing, I can go ahead, double click on the reference that I wanted to check. I can have this as initially disabled. So it's going to say, is this thing enabled? No, it isn't. And it's going to give me the warning and say, hey, this needs to be enabled. So what I'll do is I'll go in game and I will show you both scenarios as to what now happens when this is disabled and when the restriction has actually been met, when the condition, I should say, has actually been met. Uh, because that is pretty much it. That's everything that you really need to do here to have your whole unpacking system set up. So let's dive into the game. Okay, so here we are in game. And as you can see, we go up, we've got our activator here, unpack crates, select that. And it says, would you like to unpack these items? I've got not just yet. So I can be like, nope, don't want to do it. Or I can select it again and sure, go for it. And now it's like furniture required because that single dresser is not yet enabled. Then you'll see that the items are all initially in disabled because we set them to that marker. So there's nothing around right now. And we can go ahead and just change that furniture now in the CK and come back. Okay, so here we are, right back in game with this dresser re-enabled, meaning our condition will be met. And the craziest thing that I've only just noticed, I never put a light source to this goddamn fire for the previous tutorial. So I've had to get a torch out so I can actually see. Uh, but anyway, we will go back to our crates and click sure go for it and this time it should allow us to do it. Now as you can see, a little bit of time's passing. You won't be able to move because player controls are disabled. A black screen goes and then it says items unpacked and you'll see that our clutter has appeared all over the place. We've got our stuff on the wall, things on the tables and even our antlers mounted to the fireplace. So there we go. Works like a treat. And that is it for another Skyrim Creation Kit tutorial video, so I hope you found it useful. Please let me know in the comments section below. You can, of course, go ahead and check out the rest of my work over on my website at www.darkfox127.co.uk. And you can also go ahead and check out all the social media, all that good stuff. There's also the community Discord, where we have over 200 members now, which is absolutely crazy. You can talk about mods, talk about gaming, Skyrim, everything, whatever you'd like. And you can also share creations, get help with mods, and all sorts of other great stuff. So hit that like and subscribe button if you haven't already. Thank you very much for watching and I'll speak to you next time.